Hey everyone, welcome back to Someone's PC. This is video three of our rough draft series where we're going to be doing a bunch of layouts, videos, skeletons, um, and general discussions for players that are new to the community. Um, I'm your host, Russell Lapar, and with me is fellow Someone's PC member, Mark Albright. What's up, guys? So, uh, the last video we did on Megas, uh, some people seem to be taking to it a lot. They like the concept of having a skeleton instead of having like, you know, spoon-fed lists to them. So it gives you things to talk about. Um, it also helps, uh, like even experienced players think about what they don't and do need in a particular deck. So today we're going to talk about evolutionary decks. Um, mainly the ones we're going to be discussing are the ones that don't play Forest of Giant Plants because those run a completely different engine. Um, and there aren't too many Stage Two decks that are in the format right now but we're going to go ahead and discuss them because there's a lot that have potential that i believe people are overlooking including this deck which is one of my personal favorites uh guard tromp octillery so uh just to dive right into it um we're going to use a 424 evolutionary line that's pretty standard amongst the stage two lists mainly because you're being complemented by four rare candies but you also need to have that stage one Pokemon there in order to um, super rod them back in the deck or use them to evolve um, into the stage one when there's times when maybe you prize other like rare candy um, and you're only would like you're only working with two for the start of the game. Uh, how do you feel about that? I always like having the stage one in there because late game if you had to discard resources early you might not have access to candy like you said so mm -hmm. you can you can slow evolve it at that point hopefully you have enough set up yeah for sure um there's other lists like a uh, greninja break and um like i said Gi force giant plants cards they'll be playing four of the stage one evolution and that's because the stage one itself is critical towards the deck being run at the speed that it wants to run right unless you're stage two unless you're stage one um is like ridiculously powered with some attack or some ability more than likely you want to keep it at a low count one to two um if you're really anticipating not playing for a candy or something i guess you can play three or four but two's two's been pretty solid for me and i've run a savage amount of evolutionary decks go fly gun so, <laughs> um yeah getting off the line four two four play it it's good test it out um next up we have a two two octillery line um the reason being i want to see most evolutionary decks run artillery is um, you want to force your opponent to take a complete six prizes in one game off of your non EX Pokemon, right? So most decks are going to be playing Shaman EX. Uh, you bench it and then you just get into like a little prize race with your opponent of I'm trading my two for your two and there's two here. Maybe you play like a single prize attacker and you try to mix it up a little bit. But for me, most evolutionary decks I run. I'm not going to play a Shaman, e, uh, Shaman EX, and I'm going to take the the less like quick route, because I guess Shaman gets to that really, really early setup, um, and go for a more turn-based progression um, that also complements off of running N in the deck. So um, I think you've you've played the Glade Octillery deck a couple times and a couple of other evolutionary decks, and I, I've always felt like a 2-2 Octillery has been fine for me. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a really good solid number um i like the protection from late game and that it provides much more than shaman like shaman you know it's going to go back into your deck with that end and if you don't draw into it you're boned but if yeah. you have the auxiliary set up that you're you're much more secure in your late game for sure so you're you're playing shaman you're going to end up losing faster there's no <laughs> way you're going to play a game without having the shaman lysander um unless you're playing a parallel city tech and that's just not ideal for every single evolutionary list. Um, for most of the ones I build, like I said, we're always going to go with an Octillery. Octillery is very good. Abyss Hand is an amazing card. Um, and I always opt to play the um, the switch in Remoraid. So I guess we can click on him real quick. Um, it is a Wild River. For a Colorless Energy, you can switch him with one of your bench Pokemon. right? And the main reason for playing that is uh, if it's ever stuck active and you're like you open with it yeah. and then your opponent just for some reason couldn't get the damage to knock it out even though it's very low hp and you already attach a strong energy to like your gibble or whatever attack you have the opening turn you want to attach a colorless to him and use it to retreat um 
for the turn, so that way you can use him f turn to an artillery the following turn. So, um, the other one is Ion Pool, discarding a stadium. Uh, there's aren't there aren't too many stadiums that completely wreck evolution decks, so I feel like it's not necessary to have right now. Um, do you agree? I think. I was gonna say there, there might be a couple of decks like where you want to discard the stadium, but mm -hmm. it's not. There's not going to be many, so I think that the switch is a better option right now. Last format, the the Remoraid that discarded stadium was much more crucial. If yeah, you were got rid yeah. of D valleys against people that don't know how to uh, properly management. handle the resources. And yeah, you beat them just because <laughs> they had Punkaboos left over. Savage. All right, so uh, moving on to supporters. Um, usually, we always boast playing four Sycamores. Uh, in evolutionary decks like this, I honestly like playing two to three, um, unless I'm playing like I don't know three to four Super Rod or something really really good um, that can recur out of the discard pile. But like I don't know Puzzle of Time or something, um, two or three Sycamores is solid. Uh, is solid. You're you're looking to have a like the speed in your deck throughout like you know throughout the game the consistency of having Sycamore there, but discarding your early game rare candy. Garchomp or Stage One just really, really hurts, and it's, it's it's not ideal for a build like this or at many evolutionary builds. Um, I know, I know. With you, you you said you love the concept of playing three, just because we have N back in the format now, which we must play at a four of. Um, you don't. Sorry, must is a strong word. <laughs> Should is a is a better word for it. Yeah. Um, and uh, playing the playing the four N. Let's us uh, conserve our VS seekers for our tech supporters, our Lysanders, um, right? And it also lets us use N on the opening turn to shuffle like a hand of double rare candy, double Garchomp um, when you open up a Remoraid and you have no other like uh, setup card to go start going through your deck and get to your um, Gibbles, right? So um, playing 4N also complements uh, the concept that your opponent is forced to take six prizes. Um, do their attacks against your non-EX Pokemon. So if you're able to use multiple N when they're at like four prizes, three prizes, two prizes, one, then you're you're gonna hit them on those crucial turns when they really, really need to draw the Lysander or they need to have the, the backup N or like the that DCE in hand in order to secure the final prize. That uh, ending them to one with like a twelve card deck might put them in a very, very awful situation. So um I think you agree with the lines. We talked about this right before the video. And oh yeah, four ends. Four ends. Did you see? Yeah, we we talked about the the three sycamore. That was like the first thing we talked about. Yeah. And yeah. I, the way this deck's constructed, I think it just screams play four n mm -hmm. over the the sycamore because you don't want to discard the early resources for getting out your your stage two line, and and the octillery being played. So while you're abusing, it, it doesn't punish you for abusing your opponent by playing you know for playing shaman. You know you have you have your protection. And like you said, it allows you to the stream the late game ends if you are running behind because you're a stage two deck. There are going to be a lot of times where you could be, but uh, you I do caution you know don't don't get into just like an N every turn every turn every yeah, turn. Yeah. If your opponent is showing that they don't have anything, you know obviously don't don't play an N and potentially let, let them sit on the dead oh, dead yeah. end and beat their face in with a a Garchomp or whatever evolutionary attack That's, you're using. That's why you still have to play the Sycamore, because if you need to support her, but obviously your opponent is in a bad spot, you don't want to just continuously end. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay, so moving on, we have two Lysander. Um, same logic we had in our first video. One's bad right now. We don't have Compressor. Um, playing two helps you conserve your VS Seeker for uh, it's for more Lysander. Maybe you want <laughs> six in one game. I don't know. Maybe your hand sucks that bad. Um, or... You you're you're using it so you can discard it early off your sycamore, um, and then you know you have another one in the deck that you don't have to burn a VS seeker for, or you're able to establish these two hit KOs. We see decks um, like like stage one, stage two decks taking all the time because they they usually don't hit as hard as a Pokemon as e, as EX or Megas, and so you need to go for the poke if they retreat that Mega. You need to finish it off, or you need to catch up with them in prize trade if they take an early like two prizes on you and get the shaman as soon as possible. So, uh, same logic. I'm pretty sure Mark agrees. Yeah? Yeah. 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 It's solid. Um, that's it for the supporter line. Just like before, we have tech supporters. We're going to discuss those right after. Um, next up, you have a uh, 4 via Seeker. Same logic. You need to get it. Uh, it's amazing card. Play 4. Um, you can play down to 3, I guess. 
but mm. it's really not necessary. Um, the tech supporters in this game are very, very good, and they're very game-breaking, so you'll need to play them. Uh, four Ultra Ball. Um, in decks where you can have four level ball, um, and like they just revolve around having like the Octillery out or your stage, uh, your basics or your stage ones, I still recommend playing four Ultra Ball for the sake of thinning out your hand of dead cards for your late games and for your late game end or making your artillery live when it's online um for a stage one for a stage two deck like this that has energy um acceleration out of the discard pile like uh through the um i think it's turbo assault with guard yeah. yeah then um you're able to discard your strong energies attack with it and attach one of them from discard pile onto your running bench pokemon and that, that's amazing it's something you need to play four of um moving on for red candy uh if you have four red candy, you just complement it with a sta uh, to a one or two stage ones. Um, if you're really not liking the consistency of your build, then maybe you build it up to three stage ones, but that feels like overkill. Four red candy is very solid. Um, yeah, play four. <laughs> there's, no, there's no arguments there. It's a very good card. Uh, I like getting turn two. Uh, stage two is instead of turn three. Um, to follow up behind that, three trainer's mails. Again, you want the consistency. Um, decks like this you need to go for your setup as soon as possible you need to get to your ultra ball you need to get to your level ball um on turn one and then you need to start the race with your opponent to take six prizes hopefully they open a hoopa or a shaman and then they stall out for a turn and they can't even take a prize against you and and those are the games where you feel like you're just running away with it like like your opponent just not can't they can't keep up with you in a six prize trade unless they start out like turn one hammering your face in uh and taking out all your attackers so uh Past that, two level ball. Um, I like two because uh, it doesn't completely flood your hand um, with like you know empty cards like Remoraids, Gibbles. Maybe you already have enough established on the bench, and then you're going to late game, and you're going to need it later on after you already played like three Ultra Ball and one level ball in the game. Now you have an Ultra Ball and a level ball left over for when you super rod, because those are critical times when you're like, oh, if I super rod. Um, toss back this artillery he killed earlier. This Remorade I benched the turn before can immediately turn into one off of a level ball, right? And I don't have to scar anything out of my hand, and I can just go refresh there with a abyssal hand, abyssal draw. So, um, very good to have too. Uh, since same logic as before, we don't have any other way to any other way to retreat um, through supporter. We don't have AZ. We need to play two float stones. They need to sit on your artillery, um, and they need to stay there because there's no tool removal in the format. Uh, there's Mr. Mime and there's uh, I think a, Min a Mincino, but they're just uh, not as good to play. So two float zones are necessary to move your the Remoray that you opened uh, out of the active and keep it on the bench so they can't just lie sander and deck you out. Uh, agreed on everything. Kind of flew by yeah, those six cards. It. I figured you'd have an interaction, so you're like, all right, we're good, we're good. I would have right. popped in if I had a, a comment. Yeah. yeah. Um, next is one super rod. We were debating on this. And how we talked about how we kind of need to, but it's yeah. not a necessity to every single evolutionary build. So we're going to keep it at one for the skeleton. Yeah. Right. Um, same thing as other videos. You need to refuel your resources. Uh, this deck can very well force your opponent to take out six Garchomp in order to beat you. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're able to use your two stage ones to evolve, and then you're sitting on four rare candy in the late game, you can definitely um, turn one Garchomp into, or like turn turn a Gibble and another Garchomp um, into a rare candy. So it's in five five attackers, right? Yeah. Is looking for the max here because you literally can't can't get more than that. I was thinking we had Sacred Ash still, but we don't. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's gone. So one Super Rod's fine. Um, it's uh, for those times you have to Ultra Ball away two Garchomp on the opening turn, and then you have a Sycamore. So Ultra Ball two Garchomp away. Get a Ramorator Gibble, Super Rod the back in the deck. It's a good resource to have. Um, you can play two. We're going to discuss why you can play two. But to finish it off, we're going to talk about the energy line, and that's four strong energy and uh, five uh, basic fighting energy. This is um, usually the split I like to go to with most of my evolutionary decks. Uh, we lost Compressor. We can't just dump them into the discard pile anymore, and, and uh, we have a special energy that we can reuse over and over again with Turbo Assault. Some other decks can't do that, but in evolutionary builds, you have such a thick line of Pokemon um, and rare candy and other things that you don't want to try and force Max Elixir into them, right? And you don't have like a Mega Turbo where you need a ton of basic energy in order to play it. So this yeah. is a definitely ideal. 
number account. Cool. So, moving on to the tech. Uh, you're like, oh, it's 52 cards. Good skeleton, I guess. What else should I play? So, in evolutionary decks, I think most of them are going to be sporting um, Burst Balloon, mm -hmm. uh, Assault Vest, and then more than likely Max Potion or Mega Catcher. So people are like, whoa, Mega Catcher, what the heck, right? And yeah. there are times when your opponent is going to make multiple Megas in a game. They're going to have energy established to the active Mega, and there's going to be one on the bench that's just vulnerable to you eating it alive. Um, and playing one Mega Catcher in your deck allows you to use like your your N or your Sycamore for the turn. Um, the N to control your opponent, the Sycamore, to fish out more like more strong energy or anything else you need in your deck. And if you're drawn to the Mega Catcher, you can punish them for benching that um, in that in that same turn, which is uh, pretty critical moving into the late game. Um, I think uh, we might be able to see Mega Catcher make a, a movement in the game. Uh, most stage ones and stage two stage two attackers won't be able to one shot. Um, some even uh, can get very very close, like Garchomp can with the bite off, and it's complemented using Burst Balloon. So I know you like Burst Balloon because you played Trev because you're whack uh, during states. So, yeah. um, like I I think it's exactly what the stage one stage two decks need, and it can also force your opponent to Lysander um, up a non-threatening stage one or stage two attacker or the artillery in order to deal with the pressure at hand with the burst balloon right yeah definitely. so it's like uh if, if i have a if i have a guard trap hitting you for 160 because it doesn't have a strong energy or something and i attach a burst balloon to it I'm like you you can't touch this dude if you touch him you're gonna pay the consequences next turn right and so they're, they're like oh okay i guess i'll just lie sander artillery and i guess i'll lie sander your other guard trap or your gibble your goblet in the bench mm -hmm. and you're in your you're forcing them to play around a card you just attach for free and when you're doing that um you might as well play an echo arm to complement it just a one of right because you're playing two float stone anyway so if you get the off chance they have to discard a float stone instead of attaching it then you might as well yeah yeah cool so um those are the tool attachments uh, i think we i think i mentioned max potion too yeah i, I think you said it briefly yeah. i just signed it like bursting balloon really I really like it in this deck because of the numbers it makes. You know, it gives you the 220 versus an EX, and then with Faded Town, it'll give you the, you know, the two turns. It'll, it'll give you it'll knock out any Mega completely. So that's the next. That's the yeah. next thing we're going to go talk about the stadiums. No current yeah. stadiums in here. Um, the one that Mark just mentioned, Faded Town, uh, does 20 damage to Mega Pokemon. They're on the yeah. board, right? And so if you're using a Bite Off for uh, 160 against the regular basic EX. Um, they are like they can't mega evolve into it if they have a Fated Town on deck, right? Or if you drop down a Fated Town early after they already mega evolved two other Pokemon, and you can just sit there and let it tick for two turns, and they take forty each. That puts in like super super range of getting O code if they have one strong energy on a on a bite of Garchomp. And a lot of evolutionary decks, like I said, they're, they're trying to get these two hit KOs, three hit KOs, or if they have abilities um, like Ampharos, they can just drop down damage. Uh, all over the place and playing stuff like Faded Town would create really awkward numbers for your opponent where they're going to have to rethink who they're going to attack with um, in the following turns to take their six prizes so Faded Town's a super super good tech I think a lot of people are overlooking it um, and they're just riding this Mega Ray Mega Mewtwo train so hard that they're going to you know <laughs> they're not going to see it coming when uh, when um, the League Cup start to take over so um, Parallel City you can run a, a different variant of this build where you're playing no Octillery and you're playing two Shaman EX and two or three Parallel City, right? Um, and that's just so you can uh, burst out your setup, get two two to three Gibble down, play two Shamans, and then finally hit a Parallel City and put yourself at three prizes and take in the Shaman and put them into your, um, in your discard pile. There's, there's no longer a target whistle in the game, so it's not like they can pick them up out of the discard pile and knock you out, but um, you run the risk of not drawing into that parallel city in time and um, allowing your opponent to take those two quick prizes and in, and in a situation where you might be sitting there grinding it out all the way to the sixth prize for each player. So um, that's a different way to play the deck. If you do that, hey, you open up two free spots because you can change Octillers into Shaman. But at the same time, your odds of opening Shaman are very, very high, right? Because you only have four Gibble in the deck. 
Yeah. Um, and then your two shaman are going to be the ones <laughs> that are going to get stuck active. Just like, uh, you know, you mulligan all the time for Greninja because you only have four Froakies. Well, think about how many times you open Remoray. That's how many times you're probably going to be opening shaman. And it's it's not as good. So, something to consider. Um, I think the final uh, stadium we want to talk about was Silent Lab. There's no yeah. basic Pokemon in here. If you hit Silent Lab in the right time, the right moment, you cut off your opponent's Shaman. Um, you cut off their... Uh, dang, what else is... What else is stage one? Or what else is basic that has abilities that were... I mean, if you, you, if you go first and open it, um, say you're playing Mega Ray, it shuts off their Hoopa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Things things like that. Like, you're, you're basically just controlling your opponent's turn. I mean, how can you not... Yeah, yeah the setup cards. Yeah. yeah well. Or if you're playing against Water, you control Mana VX. Um, Gearna. Not that this yeah. matters for many of them, but... Yeah, uh... It's it's an ideal uh, stadium well, to have, and it's it's really disruptive um, to a lot of decks. But it's it's just they're specific. Go ahead. Shutting off mana fee kind of is important if people are playing like a water version of Mega Ray, which like I don't think is very good, but people are discussing. Yeah, they're liking it. I'm not feeling it though. But um, it, it could come into play there, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it for the stadiums. Uh, there could be a couple more, but we don't have them listed, and uh, you know. We only want to talk about the general things that most evolution decks can play. Um, so, a couple of tech supporters um, that people are considering in evolutionary decks: uh, Ace Trainer, right? If you if you drop down early in prize trades, which you probably should because um, your attacker shouldn't get online um, before their attacker does, unless you do like rare candy, double strong energy, and you're like slaughtering them. Then you're probably going to drop down in, in in the prize trade. Um, the problem with running a heavy count of Ace Trainer is if um, if you go down to like five prizes and you still haven't hit your ace trainer and then you finally take a knockout on one of their shaman or on their mega or on their baby then you're down to four and then they're still at five and now like they have to take two more knockouts before you can ever play the ace trainer and it's just not ideal to have in the mid to late game um in the early game it's fantastic so uh i i guess you can play one but without compressor it feels really awkward to play um uh, like always we have hex maniac if you need to shut off abilities, maybe you're playing against Greninja or something, or another stage 2 deck. Um, Volcanion, and you just need to uh, shut down their steam up and power ups too. Definitely uh, consider playing a Hex Maniac. Um, Pokemon Center Lady, you can use that to heal up your Garchomp, but at that point you might as well just play Max Potion. Get yeah. a free retreat, go into his second Garchomp, and then clear this one um, off of all damage. And I think uh, Teammates Giovanni Scheme were the last ones we were discussing. I like teammates more than Giovanni's scheme, if, yeah. especially if you're playing any assortment of Bursting Balloon or Faded Town. I think the Giovanni scheme's just Overkill? redundant. Yeah, yeah. you don't. Yeah. You're never gonna be in a situation between Strong Energy and all of that other tech that where you're gonna need 20 more damage. You're gonna have your damage. Yeah. But for other evolutionary decks, should we not include Bursting Balloon and Faded Town? If you're and thinking about a matchup. Um, where if a two-hit KO against your opponent's Mega is lost because you don't have 10 to 20 more damage, then yeah. definitely consider Giovanni Scheme in your deck. Um, Giovanni Great. Scheme should not be played because you get to draw to five in hand. That should never happen. That's not <laughs> ideal. Okay, you, you need to play it. So when you discard it early through Ultra Ball or Sycamore, you're going to be like, oh, this is, this is game-breaking play. Um, in, a, in a situation where they thought they're safe. Because I know I do that. You, you sit down and look at your opponent's damage output, and you're like, all right, you know, if he has X amount of strong energy, which isn't going to happen, then he shouldn't be able to kill me at all. And then, bam, Giovanni's skin drops down. Yeah. And you lose like it's Iris from 2013 or some crap like that, you know? <laughs> so Giovanni's skin is good for those. Like, you have to think about the numbers and think about why you're playing the card in the given deck. Uh, teammates is just to fish out those cards that you need at that given moment um for evolutionary decks they they need rare candy they need their special energy or they need that evolutionary line exactly when they want it right and if you're playing a mega catcher um or you're playing things like like assault vest or you know very meticulous thing that you'll need to win a matchup based upon a game breaking play then teammates can be there for you just make sure whatever you're grabbing can't isn't a supporter because that's just not ideal for you to do um, finally, I guess we can just talk about Bridget, because in the, yeah. the Auxiliary Glade deck, we had three to four Bridget in it, and people were like, why aren't you doing that here, Russ? This is, this is essentially the same thing, right? Um, but on our Glade build, we were able to stack the five t top five cards of our deck, 
um, and reorganize how we're going to proceed with the mid to late game. And if you're playing this build, that's that's not going to happen here. Um, so something something I'm I'm thinking about is you just you just have to go. You have to go with the ends. You have to go with the sycamore, and then you can get your setup through naturally drawing them through level ball, um, or through ultra ball, and something that trainer's mill can help you fish out. So. Um, doesn't, it doesn't seem that good in other builds. I really just like the Noctillery build. Or in the Gallade build, so. Yeah. Um, I guess you can consider it in decks uh, where the um, stage 2 um, or stage 1 of the attacking or evolutionary line is able to, um, I guess, help fish out your draw or set up your deck in any sort of way, but I don't think there's too many of those in this format. They're all just kind of attackers and dropping energy all over the place. Yeah. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I don't think we have much else for evolutions. Um, I live or die by them, dude. <laughs> They're so good. Evolution decks are so fun. Hopefully, you guys are like, you know, the the rogue, the people that always want to be that that person, that rogue inventor of a X deck, um, is able to make something happen in this mega format full of Volcanion and Mewtwo and Rayquaza. And just, dump speed decks and just shove down your throat so there, there's potential there's a lot of potential yeah i think amphoros so more than anything <laughs> it's, it's attack sucks though we're gonna find some, some we'll have another attacker we'll get there yeah. somehow he's a bench sitter yeah but uh hope you guys enjoyed this video um i think this is the second one this week in like 48 hours or something it's, so. it's like 200 percent more efficient than we have been yeah we're gonna we're <laughs> gonna be killing a lot more often guys so i hope you're enjoying them uh please comment below uh like and share the video blah 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 i mean we're not making money off this or so we're just doing it to be nice for the community um if you guys have any other decks that you want us to do a skeleton of please let us know uh as soon as we're done with like the general evolution decks then we're gonna start breaking down into the distinct decks like um if you play i don't know uh like a Gengar deck, because I think they're reprinting it, like the Ghost one. Really? Yeah, they're, they're, they're reprinting the, the Mega one. It's coming up soon. And then, uh, like, next format, they already show we're going to have a Pidgeot and Dragonite EX. Yeah. So, like, if you guys want specific decks for particular ones, we're going to start discussing those more often um, and giving you 60 card lists. So, um, until next time, thank you for uh, joining us at Someone's PC. And uh, shout out to Ultimate Guard. Mm -hmm. Love you guys for uh, hooking it up and sponsoring. We have one of their logos. Like right here, so I think to the left of me, the right of you. So, <laughs> lifesavers. Um, check them out. They're lifesavers. Uh, I think um, I should have a new article coming out in about a week, and then I'll have another article to follow up with it two to three weeks after that. So, uh, please check those out too. Thanks, guys, and thanks for logging in. <laughs>